بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان وی آر بیک لاسٹ ٹائم واٹ وی ڈیڈ واز دیٹ وی اسٹڈیڈ دی ایلیمنٹس آف کنفارمٹی اینڈ آلسو آف اوبیڈینس اینڈ وی سو دیٹ ڈسپائٹ دا فیکٹ دیٹ سم ٹائم وی تھنک دیٹ سم تھنگ از ناٹ گوئنگ رائٹ بٹ یٹ وی کنفارم اینڈ سیکنڈلی سم ٹائمس ایون دو وی نو دیٹ وی شوڈ ناٹ بی ڈوئنگ سم تھنگ بٹ بیسڈ اپان سم ہائر اتھارٹی وی ٹین ٹو obey what is being said to us despite its wrong implications and also our own inner self uh, not agreeing with it. And that basically is the obedience element. Today we're going to be looking at another element and that is the bystander effect. And we're going to talk about a case study also and we're going to see that how it has different implications, especially in the context of good governance or bad governance. Because uh, why is it that when people know that there is bad governance, uh, people just stay quiet and are just onlookers, just like bystanders, like they're watching uh, maybe a game of football and they're just uh, quietly just watching it, just being amused with what is going wrong. And actually the bystander effect is uh, 180 degrees uh, opposite to what is called whistleblowing because uh, actually now by law in a country like Pakistan, in many countries around the world, it is mandatory that if something wrong is happening or if there is any element of corruption. It is mandatory on the other person knowing in the organization to blow the whistle, to inform the authorities that something wrong is happening. And this is mandatory. And if we do not inform the higher authorities of whatever wrongdoing is happening, then we become an accomplice to the whole act. And being an accomplice by law basically means that the person who is the bystander or who is uh, just staying quiet not informing the authority can also be punished for being quiet. So by law, by morality, and by humanity, it is our duty to specify and call out something wrong, a corruption, or a malpractice which is taking place. And if we don't do it, then we ourselves are becoming an accomplice to the crime. And we are only a little bit different from the real criminal because the real criminal is uh, doing everything and we are just simple bystanders looking at what is happening. So whistleblowing, ladies and gentlemen, is something which is mandatory upon you and mandatory upon me also. And that is the essence of good governance and corporate governance. So the bystander effect is having a sense that the responsibility is entirely on the shoulders of an authority figure can relieve us from the unpleasantries of guilt making it easier for people to act in ways that one would regret if one had to, a chance to sit back and reflect on our actions. So, just like I was mentioning, ladies and gentlemen, because we are not doing it, being done by someone else is a person with some authority, is abusing his or her authority and doing dereliction of duty and corruption. But we are going to stay quiet because we don't want to create unpleasantry. We don't want to create an enmity with that person. We want to have a cordial relationship. We want to maintain good relations with everyone. But that's not how the cookie crumbles. It's very important that we do not do such a thing because it tends to reflect our lack of responsibility and also our lack of principles, our lack of values, and our lack of allegiance to the organization whereby we should be doing everything correct. As per the law, as per rules and regulations, without doing any hanky-panky or without doing any corruption. That is extremely important. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we do is we often pass on the responsibility to groups feeling that if everyone else is doing it, then why can't I? So, this common corruption syndrome, if the majority of people are corrupt in Pakistan, then why can't I be corrupt? Why should I be corrupt? Why can't I take gifts? Why can't I take a commission? Why can't I take speed money? Well, look at others. They're in a similar position to me and they're living a luxurious life. Why can't I live a luxurious life? Why can't I take care of my children? Why can't I give them the luxuries of life? But then there's no end. So the bystander effect basically is something which we should not indulge in. We should not fall prey to. We should not go into that daldal, that marsh, which would suck us down into the system 
of despondency and corruption. We should be able to stand up so that we can change all of this. So, this statement that if everyone is doing it, then why can't I is absurd, is abhorrent and should be condemned and done away with rather than being followed. That's the bystander effect. Now, the phenomenon of diffusion of responsibility is punctured when someone takes the lead and helps. So, what do we see is that there can be a diffusion of responsibility, but someone has to take the lead and someone has to raise his or her voice to ensure that something wrong does not happen. Now, we have a very big example. In that example, many years ago, two boys, and it reflects unacceptable behavior. So, these boys were suspected to be thieves, not proven to be thieves, suspected to be thieves. So, the local people got together and they basically picked up 17 year old Mugis and 15 year old Munibat and they were lynched publicly. They were, they were put up on a tree and they were lynched. They were whipped. They were stoned. They were beaten up by all of these crowd. There were policemen in it. There were double one, double two members in it. There were businessmen in it. There were students in them. There were teachers in them. There were professionals in them. All of them got together and started lynching these two boys. And after lynching them and killing them, they dragged their bodies with a tractor. And everyone was having fun. Everyone was a bystander. Everyone was clapping. And he, everyone was enjoying all of those atrocities on, of inhumanity taking place. And no one realized that I should raise my voice. I should try to save the lives of these two kids. But everyone was a bystander. That, oh, we are not doing it. Or we are not the main people behind it. They are going to be responsible. But we are responsible because we encourage them. Because we stood there and in an implied context gave our consent to what was happening. Which basically instilled confidence in the other people. Basically enabling them to do something abhorrent, gross, something inconceivable in broad daylight in front of hundreds of people. To actually eat one of those hundreds of people was the criminal, was the culprit and was the one who contributed into such a painful and tragic incident unfolding. So even in 2017, we see that a similar incident also occurred in, uh, in Abdul Wali Khan University in Mardan. Uh, when a student named Mashal Khan was killed due to false accusations of blasphemy. So, I mean, why? What were others doing? Why did no one try to save him? They were all bystanders. And they all were contributing factor to that lynching and to the death of that student who did not commit the crime that he was accused of. So, these are the very pertinent and very devastating effect of bystander effect. And that is what we see in Pakistan. We see it around the world, but more so in Pakistan. Someone has an accident, we are bystanders. Someone is doing something wrong, we quietly watch. We don't condemn, we don't stop. So, jihad is jihad in nafs of the intent, of the thought process, of the attitude. That is the most difficult jihad. And then the jihad of being able to say, wrong is wrong, a spade is a spade, rather than staying quiet. And then to actively engage to stop the person from doing something wrong. That is religiously 
something which we have to follow. But it's so sad and there are so many incidents which reflect the bystander effect institutionally and also from a community point of view. And therefore, one should not indulge or become a prey to a bystander effect. One should be obedient, but only for what is rightful. And if something is wrong, then one should be able to stand up and say that it is wrong and not do it. And yes, conformity can be good, but not conforming so what is bad. And we should abstain from peer pressure or group pressure to accept all the bad or all the wrong because others are doing it. We should not indulge in such excuses. We should be able to move forward with confidence, with courage, with truth, with honesty, with Asni Taqween, with this strain, with this strong desire to make a powerful, positive impact at home, in the community, in the society, in the institution, at a national level, globally. One should not compromise. One should not sacrilege one's principles and values, but one should stand up, accept reality, and call out the truth. Thank you so much.